Are you working in the HR department or do you need to manage timesheets that involve recording and evaluating employee timekeeping? If the answer is yes, then you have come to the right place. Here you can learn to maintain the timesheets in digital formats omitting the paper-based ones. Hey there Excel enthusiasts, welcome to Excel Demi, your go-to destination for mastering Excel and Excel VBA related challenges. I'm Shahriyar Abra Rafid and in today's video, I'll be showing a detailed guide on how to create a monthly timesheet in Excel. So let's roll up our sleeves and get started. For this tutorial, I'll be using Microsoft Excel 365. I'll make this timesheet from scratch. Here, I'll show the full process in different steps so that it becomes easy to understand. First of all, I need to create a basic outline of the monthly worksheet. So, just follow along. At the very beginning, construct a tempting heading in cell B2. In this case, I'll name it monthly timesheet. Let's make the title merged and center across the sheet. So, select cells from B2 to cell J2. In the alignment section, click on merge and center option. Now, go to the cell style section and select heading 2 as cell style. Increase the font size to 14. Now, it looks like a perfect sheet heading. In cell B4, write down the name of the company. Here, I'm assuming it first call still. Also, make this name merged and center. Now, I'll place the basic particulars. In cell B5, type down employee name. Next, project manager's name. Then, month. From. In cell G5, I'll write down contact number. Then, hourly rate. In the next cell, I'll write overtime rate. At last, 2. I'll merge these cells also. Also, I'll merge them in columns G and H. Now, select these cells, press and hold the control key and select these cells also. Make them middle aligned and left aligned. Make the font bold by clicking on the bold icon or press Ctrl plus B on the keyboard. Increase the font size to 12. Then, give a background fill color. I'll choose blue accent one lighter 80%. Make the company name bold and increase the font size and also apply a fill color here. Now make these cells in column D and column E also merged and center. Also make the cells in column I and column J merged and center. Now apply all borders to the selected region. In cell D5, insert the employee name, I'm assuming it Jeff Rogers. As the project manager name, I'm inserting Edward Hope. Now, give a contact number. Give hourly rate as $25 and overtime rate as $40. Let's format them into accounting format. I just have inputted these values randomly. You can use your ones here. Then in cells in the B10 to J10 range, construct some headings. Here I'll write date, then day, then in time, then lunch start, lunch end, out time, total work hour, regular office time, and overtime. Now, I'll format these headings like before. Select these cells, make them middle aligned and center aligned, increase the font size, make them bold and apply all borders, then apply a fill color. Here, I'll choose gold accent 4 lighter 80%. If you want to know about formatting cells in detail, then you can watch our video how to format cells in Excel from the link in the description box or you can click on the card at the right top corner of your display. Now, I'll insert the month name. So, Select cell D7. Here, I'll write down a formula. Equal to, at first I'll use the meet function. Press tab to enter the selected function. As the text argument, I'll use another function which is the cell function. As the info type argument, I'll select file name. So, double click on it. Insert a comma. As reference, I'll select cell A1. Close the parenthesis. Give a comma. As the start number argument, I'll insert another function, find. As the find text argument of the find function, plus a closing third bracket, comma, as the within text argument, I'll again use the cell function. 
Again, selecting the cell reference A1 and close the parenthesis. Again, close the parenthesis. Plus 1, 255. Close the parenthesis. And a space and 2023. And press enter. While typing this formula, make sure to enter any cell reference of this sheet. Otherwise, the formula won't work properly. For example, here I have entered the reference of cell A1. This formula is quite complex and hard to understand. Let's make it easier for you by breaking this formula down. Let's see what this text argument of the meet function which is cell file name A1 can do. Let's copy this portion, press Ctrl plus C, press escape. Here in cell M4, I'll paste this portion of the formula. Place an equal sign, press Ctrl V and tap enter. Here you can see that it retrieves the full file path and name of the current Excel workbook including the worksheet name. Then let's see what this portion can do. It's returning 60. Actually this function finds the position of the closing bracket within this text and it's returning us 60. So the closing bracket is in the 59th position and we added 1 to get the position of the starting letter of the worksheet name which is S. So if you start counting from the left you will find the S in the 60th position. The meet function extracts a substring from the text obtained using the cell function. It starts from the position found using the find function and extracts up to 255 characters. This effectively extracts the worksheet name from the full file path and name. Finally, the extracted worksheet name is concatenated with a space and 2023. You can use any other year if you want. So, this formula uses the file path and name information to extract the worksheet name and allows you to append any additional text to it. At this point, you can see the name of our sheet on the cell with 2023. Now, I'll change the name of the sheet to July. Because I want to make the monthly timesheet for the month of July 2023. Press enter and you can easily see that the month name is automatically input into cell D7 after changing the sheet name. Let's delete this formula. Now, I have to set the starting date for this month. So, select cell D8 and insert a formula here. Equal to, here I'll use the date value function. Select the function. As the date text argument, I'll insert 1 and ampersand operator and select cell D7. Close the parenthesis. Here, D7 represents the month of July 2023. A date that is stored at text can be changed into a serial number that Excel can identify as a date using the date value function. Press enter. And here you can see the serial number of the date 1st July. Now select cell I8 to show the ending date of that month. Write down the formula in the cell equal to EO month as the start date argument. I'll select cell D8 and as the month's argument, I'll insert 0. Close the parenthesis. D8 represents the starting date of the month. The EO month function is used to determine the end of the month. Press enter. Here you can see the serial number of the ending date of this month, July. Now I'll change the format of these two cells. So select them. In the number section, click on the number format drop down icon and select long date format. And here they are. You can see the date with the corresponding day. To build a timesheet, I must create different cells of different dates and days. So, select cell B11 and type the formula equal to D8. Press enter. Here, the date is shown in long format. So, we have to convert it into a short format. Press Ctrl plus 1. It will open the format cells dialog box. In the number tab, go to the custom category. In the type box, Write D and click OK. Thus, it shows only the date of 1st July. Now, select cell B12 and enter a formula equal to, here I'll use the if function. As the logical test argument, I'll insert B11 less than I8. I'll use the absolute reference for cell I8. Press F4 on the keyboard, comma. As the value if true argument, insert B11 plus 1 comma and as the value if false argument I'll insert a blank then close the parenthesis and press enter 
Here, B11 and I8 represent the first date of the month and the last date of the month successively. I have applied a logical test using the if function here. If the date in cell B11 is less than the month's end date, then the formula returns the next date of the month in cell B12 by adding 1. Otherwise, it will show nothing. Here, the date is showing as serial number, so I have to convert it into a valid date. Press Ctrl plus 1, go to custom category and type D. Click OK. Bring the cursor to the bottom right corner of cell B12. Thus, it will look like a plus sign. Here is the fill handle tool. Use the fill handle tool and drag it to cell B41 to exhibit the rest days of the month. Now, I have to input the day of the corresponding date. For this, select cell C11 and input the formula. Equal to, here I will use the text function. As the value argument, I will select cell B11, comma, as the format text argument, I'll write triple D. Close the parenthesis and press enter. Here, the text function converts the date into a text string. Also, I give the format as DDD to show the first three letters of the name of a day. Actually, it's Saturday. Double click on the fill handle to autofill the rest. Let's add borders to this range. Select cells starting from cell B11 to cell J41 and click on all borders icon. And the border is applied. As Sunday is the weekly holiday, we don't have to input anything into those cells. So, I will highlight those cells with conditional formatting. Select cell D11, move to the Home tab. In the Style section, click on the Conditional Formatting drop-down icon. Here, select the New Rule option. It will open the New Formatting Rule dialog box. In the Select a Rule Type section, click on Use a Formula to determine which cells to format. In Edit the Rule Description section, I will input my formula here equal to then a dollar symbol C11 equal to sun as I want to highlight the Sundays. Here I have applied absolute referencing so that the column number C doesn't get changed. Only the row number will get changed. Now click on the format button. It will open the format cells dialog box. Go to the fill tab. Click on the more colors button. Go to custom tab. Here in the RGB color model. I'll change the value of green and blue. I'll change it to 147, also this to 147 and click OK. Here you can see the sample color. Click OK. Also click OK to close the dialog box. Now use the fill handle to expand this formatting in cells in the D11 to J41 range. You can see the cells in the rows of Sundays are highlighted with the selected color. At this time, we should enter the necessary data like in time, lunch start, lunch end, out time in the sheet. Here, I'll put some sample data into the sheet. 